In this video, I'm going to talk about how New World now has some elements of pay to win. And I will address some of the counterpoints that you guys made in one of my last videos on the subject. But ultimately, I'm going to tell you why it is pay to win, but I don't think it's actually that bad. So I'm basically going to annoy both sides. So if you're not familiar, New World has now added some monetization options. The main one being a season pass. There are two tracks on the season pass. One of them is free and the other you need to pay for. You can pay about $20 and get the pass, or you can pay $30 and get the head start and you end up being about level 21. It's also worth noting that you can literally just pay for levels. So I personally, on one of my alts, literally paid to go from level one to level 100 in about 20 minutes. Not only that, there are now some XP boosters. Specifically, there is a gathering XP booster, territory standing XP booster, season XP, weapon XP, and there is a proficiency potion, which I'll come on to later. Now, the difference between the free and the premium reward track is pretty interesting. Basically, it's hard to describe, but you can think of it as being that the paid version is just a better path than the free version. It's literally all the same ranks and levels, right? You still have to get to 100, but the RNG of your gear is better, and generally there's more materials in there. Really, there's a few key items to discuss, though, that is included in both tracks. There's random gear, there's gold, there's umbral shards, and there are some resources like Asmodium, as well as some consumables. Personally, I think you can make an argument that all of those at some level are actually pay to win. As I said, I paid for it on my alt, and I literally got some better gear than what I currently had, and I got about 50,000 gold once I sold everything. I literally swiped my credit card and got more powerful in-game. It's hard to say that that is anything other than pay to win. The gear is obviously just better than what I had, and the gold I could buy more gear. I had an advantage over those who didn't pay, both from the fact that I bought the premium pass and the fact that I got there quicker than everybody else. The time one is a little bit less important. If people are going to catch up, then that's not really a big problem, right? But still a bit of an issue. But the key thing is for me is that it is actually capped. For most people, you're just going to buy the season pass once. You're going to level it up and be done. There is a way of getting some of the actual rewards on a different character, but it has to be in a different region. And we're not really going to talk about that here. For me, though, the fact that it's capped is actually the saving grace of the season pass and you will pay to win. Some games like World of Warcraft, you can just buy as much gold as you like, I think. Now, some people will say, oh, well, the gear and stuff like that is RNG, therefore it's not pay to win. Well, as far as I know, the premium pass actually has better odds of getting legendary and you have more legendaries. And if anything, I think RNG just makes the whole process worse. Some people will get NAF all and some people will actually get best in slot items. Gambling and pay to win, in my opinion, not a great combo. But as I said, this is all pretty much capped at the moment. And for me, that's actually where my personal pay to win line is drawn. I would prefer that all the MMOs that I play are definitely not pay to win, but I do have a line that if they cross, I'll stop. And if they don't quite cross it and I actually enjoy the game, I'll play it. And for me in New World, that line hasn't been crossed just yet. By the way, I do think it's completely okay for some games to be pay to win. I just personally won't play them. That's all good. As long as I'm not being lied to or misled, crack on developers. I'm just not going to play it. And as I said, my line is basically capped versus uncapped. So let me explain. I don't want to play a game where somebody can pay, say, like $2,000 and be stronger than somebody who's paying $20. Then you're in an arms race where the richest person wins. And I think a capped season pass sort of stays within those guidelines, right? Now, I'm not going to talk about gear sets here. That sort of pay for convenience or you can call it pay to win if you like. It's a little bit awkward the way that they've done it. I don't really like it. They've made a problem. They've sold the solution. It's a classic annoying thing. But but it's not really part of the discussion today. So with the season pass, you are buying more gear, you're buying more resources. For me, that's obviously pay to win. However, it is a capped pay to win and really you can't pay more to win than other people. However, that does slightly change when we talk about boosters because the boosters can be bought an unlimited amount of times. There is no cap. And this is where I might have a problem, but I sort of don't because it's not that bad. Weapon XP, gathering XP, season XP and territory standing XP. I don't really mind too much. The worst defender there is probably the territory standing but i don't really care about it all that much the one that i don't like is the gathering yield boost a proficiency potion basically simply this means that you take this potion and you get more resources than you otherwise would when you go out and gather and farm you will get more stuff that will be worth more gold and this is uncapped in a way if you're rich you could just permanently have this boost up and i really don't like it i can't really make any excuses for it i think it's bad the official stance here is that the potion you can buy isn't as strong as the one that you can get in game and that's true it's sort of like tier four rather than tier five i think but the one in game 
cost you actually resources, right? You either need to go and gather the materials to craft it or you buy it with gold. The one you can buy from the store, well, rich people can just have an infinite amount if they want, right? Well, not infinite because that would make them the richest person on the planet, but you know what I mean. For me, that's something I can't really defend. I don't quite hate it enough to stop playing, but for me, it's getting close. But I really wish that they would have stayed away from that. Well, actually, I really wish they would have stayed away from a lot of things in the season past, but you know, it is what it is now. Okay, so let's actually address some of the counterpoints that you guys made in one of my previous videos. Now, I'm not going to specifically like give you examples of people saying this. I don't want to embarrass anybody. And by the way, it's completely fine to disagree with me as long as we're all very nice about it and we're very polite and we actually talk to each other on a nice level. Let me know how you think about this in the comments below. I'm not God. There's no set truth here. Okay, so one statement that I kept seeing is that skill matters. So basically, it doesn't matter how much you pay. If you're bad, you're going to be bad. And to some extent, that is right. However, this is relatively easy to refute. If you have two equally skilled players and one of them has paid and one of them has not, then the one who pays now has an advantage and will win the fight most of the time. Now, I know you can add a lot of variables in there, like what if you're doing a war? What if there's other people around? But let's face it, right? We're going to go into madness if we keep going down all of the variables. If we actually try and take away the variables, then it is still pay to win. If you could play against yourself and one of you paid for the premium pass and the other one didn't, and you got better gear in the premium pass, well, then you're probably going to win that fight against yourself, if that makes any kind of sense. A different kind of onanism, I guess, than what we're used to. But in a way, you're right. It's not going to make you a better player, but it is going to make your character stronger. A bad player with amazing gear is probably going to lose against a good player with bad gear. But that doesn't mean that gear is irrelevant. It just means that skill is also relevant. You remove the skill part and the best gear wins. The next current point is that you can't be more powerful than somebody who doesn't pay basically there is a best in slot and it's not like the person who pays is ahead of that again technically this is true but this is not really my definition of pay to win my definition of pay to win is not you pay and you have a permanent advantage over people who could not catch up i think like in diablo immortal for example you could pay and have a massive advantage and the free players could technically get there it was just going to take them ages right asmongold said this on stream and i do agree with it what makes an MMO pay to win? And he said that if you can buy something at endgame that makes your character stronger or expedites a non-cosmetic process, then that's pay to win. And the simple fact is here, you can pay and it makes your character stronger, potentially. The gold definitely does. It's undeniable. You are right though, there is a cap to potential power, but this would only really be relevant if everybody you played against was in best in slot gear which they're not. The next one is that it's random, therefore it's not pay to win. And I do address this a little bit in the video already. It being random just makes it worse to me. It means that some people will get best in slot gear and some people would get absolutely nothing. If anything, it sort of adds FOMO to the past. What if I get really good gear in that? It's basically a loot box. You might get something amazing, you might not. The next statement is that the game needs money. Are you poor? Can you not afford it? This is okay, man, get over it. And this one, I actually sort of agree with. I do agree that games need to be monetized, especially MMO where the server cost and stuff like that and i don't think that this is the worst pay to win i don't think it destroys the game in any meaningful way and the fact that it's capped that yeah, makes it sort of okay for me sure i'd prefer that it was like a sub fee like ashes of creation or something like that is planning but you know i'm okay with what we're being delivered but I don't want us to pretend that it's not pay to win just because they need the money we've got to call a spade a spade it's pay to win but i don't think it's that bad as I said at the start, I'm going to annoy both sides. The next one is that it's only pay to win if you can swipe the credit card and win. I think some people try and define pay to win that it's only pay to win if you automatically win. You just pay and you're guaranteed victory. There are probably some trash mobile games where that's the case. But in a game that requires any kind of amount of skill, then this literally almost never happens and it's completely unrealistic. Let's say I'm playing against myself again and one of us pays. The one that pays, maybe instead of going from winning 50 percent of my games i now win 51 percent of my games mm, probably okay right but now let's say i go to winning 99 percent of my games versus the one that didn't pay that's probably not okay so there's obviously a scale there and it's very hard to define but to say that you have to go from 50 50 to being like a hundred percent victory condition i find that completely weird it's obviously more nuanced than that in most games even a terrible player who pays will not automatically win against somebody who's a very good player but who hasn't paid but if two equal skilled players go against each other and one of them has paid they have an advantage they'll win more than they would have done otherwise right for me 
pay to win. And the next one is that you can earn everything in game. This is also a little bit like the skill argument in a way. Paying to not spend time getting the equipment, getting the uh, materials and all that kind of good stuff does give you an advantage. It's true though that you can farm a lot, you can get the materials, you can craft and you can probably craft the items that are just as good as the ones that you can get from the season pass. You can probably craft better. However, in the time that you did that in an alternative universe, you could have been getting better at the game. You could have been doing PvP, PvE. You could have been doing something else that maybe made you more gold or something like that. There is a time cost to the actual not buying the premium season pass. It may not be very huge, but it is still relevant. Again, if you say you have two people, one of equal skill, but also equal time spent, then the one who pays has an advantage. That to me is simple pay to win. Now, overall, I address why I think it is pay to win, but I don't want to seem overly dramatic. I do think the fact that it's capped makes it okay. The one that I really don't like is the proficiency booster because you can actually keep paying and get that almost indefinitely. Sure, it's not the strongest, most important thing in the world, but I really have a problem with that one simply because it's uncapped. The season pass though, I don't like the fact that there's gear in it or anything like that. I also don't like the fact that it's RNG, but I don't mind it so much because it is cap. It means that somebody who's going to pay $300, not really going to be ahead of me who paid $20. Well, actually on my alt, I paid about $100, but you know, that was just for the content, right? I will keep an eye on what New World does in the season two pass. Maybe things will get changed. Maybe they'll get better. Maybe they'll get worse. For now, I'm on board with what we've got. I'm happy to pay. I've already paid on two accounts. I'm happy to support the game that I really like, but let's not kid ourselves. Let's not lie. Let's say the game now has an element of pay to win, but it's not that bad. As I said, I don't really know too much about World of Warcraft these days, but I do know that you can buy gold, like actually legitimately through the game. People tell me that Final Fantasy is pay to win. I don't really know too much about that game at all, but a lot of the popular MMOs have elements of pay to win. It's not crazy, but with New World, it's also not that bad. It's not Diablo Immortal. I know that's not an MMO, but I can't think of the worst pay to win MMO out there right now, because generally pay to win MMOs, they die off quite quickly. So yes, the game is pay to win, but no, it's really not that bad, right? It's no more pay to win than say most of the other popular MMOs out there. I know I'm going to get a lot of comments talking about the subjects that I actually addressed. I really hope that people who comment on the subjects that I mentioned watch the video till the end. If you did, please don't ask me then. Big shout out to my YouTube members and Patreons. I'm planning on doing a huge stream on Twitch this weekend. It might even be going live when this video goes live. Right now I have a little bit of a sore throat. I'm not sure what's causing it. I don't know if I'll delay it or what have you. I'm still planning on doing it. So come and give me a follow over there. It should be for charity. I've already got that all set up so everything's looking good. Please give me a follow please come and watch just lurk it's all good you don't have to donate if you can't afford it it's all good what you should definitely do though is have a most beautiful day like and subscribe goodbye